Welcome. Welcome everyone. Welcome to the Elk Grove Unified School District Virtual College Fair. We have a killer lineup of institutions for you to hear from this evening. But before I turn it over to them, I do have a couple of housekeeping items for you all. Number one, this is a webinar. So your camera and your microphones are off. Um, so our panelists cannot see or hear you this evening, but they do know that you're gonna have some questions for them and they wanna make sure those questions get answered. So throughout the presentation, you're welcome to use the Q&A feature at the bottom of your screen. Note the college or university that you're directing your question to so that they can answer it most appropriately and then type out your question. Next, um, this is a really fun way to learn about colleges and universities. And so we hope that you'll have fun and you'll even sign up for more sessions. So there's one, two more hours after this, this evening. Um, and so we hope that you'll enjoy that. This is also being recorded this evening and as all of the programs are this evening. So they will be available at strivescan.com slash elk dash grove. So I am going to turn it now over to our first institution. You're going to first hear from CSU Stanislaus. Um, Leticia, take it away whenever you're ready. Thank you, Courtney. And I will be sharing. So I'm do that, doing that right now. All right. All right. Uh, well, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Leticia Barrios. Uh, I'm an admissions counselor here from Stanislaus State. And so just before I begin, um, I will say I am a proud alumni of Stanislaus State and I'll be sharing my experiences um, as much as I can in these 10 minutes. Um, and if you have any questions, I'll be more than happy to answer those. Home of Stanislaus State, uh, Turlock provides an opportunity to combine a quality learning environment in a relaxed rural setting. As you can see, Turlock is located uh, between Fresno and Sacramento. Um, and we're pretty centralized to the Northern Valley, uh, to the Bay Area, Yosemite, and uh, to the coast. Um, in fact, this is uh, one of the things that I, as a student, um, really enjoyed, and uh, I, I always encourage students to go and explore our surrounding valley and Northern California state. Uh, just some fun facts here. Um, as you can see, I, I will say um, our university student center uh, opened last year. So it's brand new, not quite uh, been used yet by students, but this um, October 1st, we're anxious to see students come back on campus and start using our brand new student center. Uh, just to note, we do have over 60,000 students that have graduated from Stan State. Uh, our campus is a mid-sized college of over 10,000 students, and 76% uh, of our students are first-generation students. Uh, our faculty ratio, uh, student-faculty ratio is 22 to, 20, to 1, uh, which is one of the things that students most like about San State. And we have 45 majors with 44 minors as well. Stan State is widely recognized for its dedicated faculty and high quality academic programs. In fact, we did uh, conduct a survey a couple of years ago and overwhelmingly uh, students uh, reported how um, impressed they were with our programs, uh, how well-rounded they were and how well prepared they felt as they graduated. So um, like I said, 45 majors, 45 minors and over 100 areas of concentration. We do have uh, four major colleges at Stan State. Um, as you can see, uh, this one is the Arts, Humanities, and Social Science. Um, we have a lot of fun majors here, uh, and uh, some majors uh, are very popular, uh, like agriculture here in the Valley, um, but criminal justice is always a popular one because uh, we do have that forensic psychology, uh, forensic science component, sorry about that. Uh, forensic science uh, concentration under criminal justice. So that is very sought out by students. 
Uh, and then we have other um, majors, uh, a lot of teachers, uh, high school teachers, junior high teachers do major in a lot of these programs uh, to become teachers. Uh, other majors like geography, uh, students always wonder, what can I do with that? Well, uh, especially now, there's a lot more to do. You can go work for Google Maps or work for the city and be a city, city planner, uh, but do explore all these fun majors. College of Business, um, we do have seven areas of concentration. Um, as you can see here, uh, we have uh, accounting, accounting, computer information systems, finance, general business, management, marketing, and operations management. Uh, education, we have kinesiology, social work, liberal studies, kinesiology, uh, kinesiology exercise science for those students. Oops, sorry about that. Uh, for those students uh, that want to go into uh, physical therapy. Uh, College of Science, um, biology uh, is one of the most popular majors here at Stan State, as well as with nursing and psychology. And as you can see, there's also other fun science majors that you can pursue here. We do offer clubs, orgs. Uh, we are in the second division of the NCAA. We have intramural sports. We have study abroad. Anything you can find at any other university or college, you will find at Stan State. And just to remind you, that is uh, something that we encourage you to get involved in and make your experience uh, the, the most. At Stan State, you can definitely feel at home. We do have the dorms. We have uh, great amenities with counseling on site. So we have uh, field trips uh, that are free to students. We have um, uh, peer, um, uh, peer uh, oh, helpers. Uh, so it, it's um, if you go want to take a certain class and you would like somebody to take it with you, then um, uh, you can request that to happen. But um, again, it does include uh, amenities, uh, uh, internet, uh, electricity, and other um, items, even laundry. You don't have to pay for laundry. You just go and take your detergent. And so all these fun things that, again, can definitely contribute to your experience here at Stan State. Here you will find support. Not only do we want you to come here, we do want you to graduate. And uh, we do have a warrior pantry. We have a tutoring center, a writing center, a health center, gym. Um, a lot of these things that you don't have to worry about paying for because they do come included in your tuition. We even have a, a career in professional development. So we will definitely help with uh, internships, uh, finding a job off campus, on campus. Uh, and having that hands-on experience that you need to start building your resume. Financial aid, of course, we also have that. So um, as you can see, the uh, priority application period for that is from October 1st. Oh, okay. <laughs> it, that six minutes goes by super, super yes. fast. <laughs> super no fast. worries. Thank you. Thank you so much for your presentation. Um, audience, if you're just joining us, this is a six by six, which means six institutions have six minutes to present. Um, make sure if you have questions to put those questions in the Q&A. Um, type out the college or university that you're you're directing your question to and then note the note the um, question that you're asking next up i have the pleasure of introducing to you michigan state university take it away isaac whenever you're ready thank you courtney i feel like i'm on a game show right now so i'm really excited um hi everyone good afternoon my name is isaac cervantes i'm with michigan state university uh, i am the manager of southern california and southwest recruitment and I know Elk Grove is located in Northern California. I'm actually sitting in for my colleague, Naomi Schoenholz, who is your regional representative for Michigan State University. Nevertheless, excited to be here and share more about our institution and answer any questions that you might have. So let's go ahead and get started. So we are in the state of Michigan and Michiganders love to reference the mitten here in terms of the state and what it looks like. So we're in East Lansing, Michigan, which is about an hour and a half from Detroit, about uh, let's say a three and a half, four hour car ride from Chicago. 
Um, and getting to East Lansing is fairly easy, especially if you're commuting um, from the Northern or Southern California or any really major metropolitan city in the United States with plenty of nonstop um, flights into Detroit. We do have an airport in East Lansing, but it is a regional um, airport and it's much easier logistically to just fly into Detroit. So if you're either visiting campus um, or planning to visit campus, just some tips on how to get to um, our main campus in East Lansing. So a little bit more about our city of East Lansing. It's your run of the mill college town. So you can see on these photos, it's a little bit mix of historic buildings with a live and vibrant um, city life. And so main campus spans across a three mile avenue called Grand River Avenue. And you can see there, um, it's across the way from main campus where on the other side, there are restaurants and different other eateries and shops and galleries. It's a very lively place. A lot of students and surrounding residents essentially frequent that a lot. So you'll see a lot of people walking around, riding bikes. It's a very lively community, very safe community as well. We're about 15 minutes from Lansing, which is the state capital, um, and also a great resource for students who are studying policy or wanting to go into law or into government. We have a lot of great internships for our students. So really nice surrounding areas with a lot of opportunities. So a little bit more about my campus. We are a large institution, both academically and physically. Starting off physically, we're about 5,000 acres large. A lot of that is gonna be dedicated to research and innovation as we are a land grant institution. Um, as you can see there, 49,000 students in total, 39,000 make up our undergraduate students. And then academically, we have over 200 areas of study within 17 degree granting colleges and three residential colleges. Out of all of our areas of study, um, close to 29 of our programs have been ranked top 10 in the nation. Some of those include our business within logistics and supply chain management, nuclear physics, higher education administration, and um, communications. So if you're interested in those areas, um, we would be a great opportunity. We're also a huge agricultural hub for the region. So if you're interested in environmental sciences, agriculture, if you want to go to veterinary, we have pre-veterinary programs for large and small animals. Um, so really just a mixed bag of different academic programs. We also really like to give our students um, outside classroom experiences that are going to be transformational. So for my business students, we have been ranked top 15 for our entrepreneurship hub. Um, so students have the opportunity to get resources for startups, get support for any research as they're looking to, you know, further their innovations within business. Undergraduate research is also really huge. Like I mentioned, if you are also STEM focused or interest, we have plenty of undergraduate research opportunities and where you can work in tandem with uh, faculty on some really awesome leading research opportunities. One of the other things that we're really known for is our education abroad. So uh, within the last 10 years, we've ranked top 10 within our education abroad program, over 275 programs offered on all seven continents, that's including Antarctica. So if you're thinking about going away for two weeks, a semester, a full year, definitely check out our education abroad program. Outside of that, we have plenty to be involved in with over 900 clubs and organizations to be a part of, whether it's academics, sports, self-interest, anything and any, everything, um, honestly. So looking at our admissions requirements, uh, we are a holistic review process in regards to our admissions. So we're gonna be looking at ninth through 11th grades. Uh, we really like to see students who push themselves. So those who are taking AP, IB honors or dual enrolled in college courses is something we like to see. Um, we are on the MSU application, Common App and Coalition. We do not have a preference as long as you submit one. Um, there is a prompt in which you can choose and we tell students definitely let us know what um, we should know about you as a student outside of your academics. So take those prompts um, to your advantage. There's no letters of recommendation required. There's no additional essays required and we are a test optional institution. So we do have an early action admissions window, which is currently open. And the deadline for that is November 1st, and that is non-binding. But by submitting your application by November 1st, you are considered for maximum scholarship. And for out-of-state students, I know financial aid is definitely an important piece to making that decision. So that's a little bit about my institution. I'm leaving here with my contact information, but of course, my colleague Naomi is your manager for Northern California. So if you have any questions, there is her contact information, my contact information as well. And in the chat, I will also drop a 
a link that if you would like to get more information and stay connected, you can fill that out and we will get you that information. So thank you so much for your time and I'll go ahead and pass it on to the next institution. Thank you so much, Isaac, to you and Michigan State University. Next up, I have the pleasure of introducing to you the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. Take it away, Kelsey, whenever you're ready. Thank you. All right, welcome everyone. I hope you're having a good night. My name is Kelsey. Okay, perfect, sorry about that. My name is Kelsey Kaplan. I'm a senior admissions coordinator with the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. I am also a proud alumna of UNLV. UNLV is the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. We are a large public state university uh, located in an urban location. We have about 31,000 students on our campus, but our average class size sits at about 33 students and the campus feels a lot smaller than it actually is. So the, if you ever had the chance to visit the campus, you'd notice that we are a very diverse campus at UNLV. Las Vegas is one of the most diverse cities in the nation. And so is UNLV, we're consistently ranked as one of the most diverse institutions this past year, we're ranked as number one. UNLV has student alumni in over 86 different countries. So we have a lot of students that come from out of the United States in our international student population. We also have a lot of different cultures at UNLV as well. Being in the city of Las Vegas, like I mentioned, we're a very diverse city and people come from all over the world to visit and live in Las Vegas. Being on a diverse campus gives you the opportunity to interact with people who are different than you. And I think that's one of the best experiences students can take out of being a UNLV student. We serve a lot of first generation college students as well. And you have a lot of opportunities for, to learn from people around you. One of the reasons we have such a large international student population is due to our hospitality management program. Our hospitality management program is ranked number one in the US and number two in the entire world. So we get a lot of notoriety outside of the United States for our hospitality management program. If you're not interested in hospitality, that's okay. UNLV has over 300 programs to choose from. We have a top ranked nursing program. We also have a great and school of engineering that's been jumping up in the rankings over the last several years. Being at a campus with so many different majors gives you the op opportunities to explore. And if you do not know what you wanna study, you can also come in as an exploring major student do your first and second year, just taking different classes and different disciplines, getting your general education studies done, and then picking a major as you go into your third and fourth year. If you do not, if you are also interested in honors program, we have a great honors college at UNLV. It is a small selective group of students and you can apply for them separately. UNLV has a lot of graduate school opportunities. We have a school of medicine, a top law school. We have a great dental school, occupational therapy school, and a lot of other graduate programs. So if you're thinking about going to graduate school in the future, you're at a campus that you have a lot of opportunity to be exposed to that. UNLV also is a top tier research institution. So being at UNLV, you have the opportunity to engage with faculty members who are involved in research projects outside of the institution. Uh, one example we have right here is this third photo is, oops, this third photo is one of our students and faculty members building a robot. Uh, we have a really strong robotics team at UNLV competing in a lot of international competitions. UNLV also has a lot of opportunities for students to get internships. Being in the city of Las Vegas, we are a huge growing economy and students have a lot of opportunities to get jobs and internships while they're a student. Uh, even though we are a big city, it's a very accessible city and it's easy to get from campus to a campus job or an off-campus job. And that gives students the opportunity to engage in what they're learning outside of the classroom, which is really important to our students here at UNLV. We also have a great study abroad program in 42 different countries if you're interested in going outside of the United States for a semester or two. UNLV is a really fun campus to be on. We have over 400 clubs and organizations. There is Greek life, there's student organizations related to your majors and academics. We have student government, we have an activity board. We also are division one in athletics and we can pee in the Mountain West Conference. Uh, one of the best things about UNLV is our students get free tickets to all of our home games. So if you come to UNLV, you can go to your, uh, go to the UNLV football games in the brand new Allegiant Stadium or go see the Run and Rebels play in the Thomas and Mack Center. A lot of opportunities to just have fun and be a student. If you are interested in applying to UNLV, our application is open and our admissions requirements are right here. We require 3.0 core academic GPA, and we are test optional as well. So if you do not have a test score, we're only gonna be reviewing your transcripts for admissions. 
UNLV is also most importantly a WUI school. So if you are eligible for the WUI with a 3.25 unweighted GPA, your tuition will be reduced to about $13,000 a year to attend UNLV for out of state. You can also get additional scholarships to stack on top of this and they're four year renewable. Our priority deadline for consideration is November 15th. So students admitted by November 15th have best priority for financial aid and scholarships. So we encourage you to get your application in as soon as possible so you fall into that priority pool. Uh, we do accept students all the way until June 1st. So if you do not meet our priority deadline, you can still apply after that. I hope you've enjoyed this session. And if you do wanna learn more about our campus, we offer a lot of different virtual sessions on our calendar. We also have our annual Rebel Preview event coming up on October 16th that you can sign up for if you wanna visit the campus in person. I'll throw out some links for you guys so you can see it, see that information, and then also get my information as well. And we'll be available for any questions in the chat if you have them. I hope you guys have a great night. Kelsey, thanks so much to you and the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. I told you guys this was fun. Um, we've heard from three great institutions and have three great ones left to go. So next up, I'd like to introduce to you the University of Nevada, Reno. Take it away whenever you're ready. All right, so we're gonna head up north in the state of Nevada, which for all of you here is actually really close to where you're located. So the University of Nevada, Reno, you're getting onto the 80, whether you're coming from the five or the 99 and you're heading east on the 80. And Reno is essentially that first city that you're going to hit in Nevada. So we're still pretty close to home. We're really a good weekend trip. So if you do want to have that out of state experience, you get that at the University of Nevada. But you do have the opportunity to come home, visit your family, friends, cats, dogs, fish, anyone you are missing. We're very accessible for that opportunity as well. And my name is Shaler. I'm a regional admissions counselor for the university. The most important takeaway is that I am your admissions counselor. I am based in the Sacramento area, so I am very available to answer any of your questions at any point, whether that is tonight or it is after this event. Some great takeaways about the universities. We are a tier one research institution, really meaning we're a top level research that we offer, very comparable to what type of research you would find at a UC's campus. And you can engage in research as early as your freshman year. And keeping in mind, you do not have to be a biology major to do research. You can be a graphic design major or really any field that we offer at the university. You could potentially get published with your name on a research paper of your professor, or you could have your own as part of our undergraduate research journal. We are a good medium-sized institution. So we have about 20,000 students on campus. So that does put us not as large as UCLA, but not as small as St. Mary's College in the Bay Area. So we still have a wealth of opportunities to know how you can engage. And we still offer that large kind of campus feel by having Division I sports, by having a large football presence, by having some really great basketball opportunities as well. If you are coming to the university, we do have some great opportunities to not only go out of state, but you can go out of the country by studying abroad with us if you do choose to do so. Really easy because USAC, the University Studies Abroad Consortium, does have headquarters on our campus, makes it really accessible to study abroad and ensure those courses are actually transferable to your degree program. And we have a lot of different degree programs. We have 145 different academic programs and none of them are impacted. So as long as you apply to the university, you can study any of these majors as long as you are admitted, which is really wonderful. There's no separate application per program. So a brief overview of kind of what we have, we have 13 different colleges. So these are where all of our majors are housed. So kind of keeping in mind some of the very more well-known ones in the California area, our College of Engineering is ranked nationally top 10%. We have a lot of really wonderful emphases like mechanical, electrical, environmental, civil, and mining. We're going to have an aerospace engineering program debut in about the next year. We already have a minor, we already have a director. So we're really just waiting for confirmation on those courses in the catalog. We do have a really wonderful nursing program. It's not direct entry. You would come in as a pre-nursing student, but you complete 900 clinical hours of work. It's an 18 month program and over 90% of our students become a registered nurse after graduating. We do also have four year education programs. So if you wanna get your bachelor's in four years, but also be a licensed teacher, we do offer that. We do have agricultural sciences. We have a veterinary science program where you are working with large animals, not just cats and dogs. 
and we do have off-campus greenhouses as well. So we do have a run of the gamut. We do have liberal arts. We do have the sciences. We have the arts. We're really able to tailor to all of your different needs at the university and kind of double dip in all of them at the university as well. And we do have 250 plus different clubs on campus. We do have Greek life on campus. We do have Greek houses. We have a career and internship fair at least once a semester with 40 to 60 different employers coming to campus. Some of those employers being Tesla, Panasonic, IBM, Google, Microsoft, Amazon, all six of those having Reno homes in the area. So they're not traveling to the Silicon Valley to come to us. We have close partnerships with our Washoe County School District. We have an art museum nearby. We're also very close to Tahoe. So you do have that accessibility to the outdoors into those spaces to do research. So as I was saying, close to Tahoe, but Reno itself is known as the biggest little city. So you do get this small town college feel while having those big time city opportunities. So if you like having that outdoor access, we do offer that at the university. And we're even a little bit closer to Lake Tahoe than you necessarily are now in the Elk Grove area. So looking at that admissions, we're not like the A to G. So we don't require foreign languages. We don't require fine arts. Make sure that you have these set of core classes and we'll compute a GPA off of those courses. So the biggest thing is that we do look for three years of a natural science where I know A to G asks for two. So do keep that in mind for those of you who are maybe juniors or below. If you're seniors, it's nice to be on track for that. We are test optional for fall 2022. And if you have juniors or below, we're just stay tuned for maybe what we're doing for the future years. Now, WUBI is very important. How are you going to be saving money? We have a, kind of a few different ways to qualify, but think of this as having a lot of options. So if you don't take test scores, great. You can still qualify for WUI with a 3.25 cumulative unweighted GPA. And really what WUI allows you to do is save about $12,500 on tuition. So if you account for tuition, fees, and housing for about $11,000 per semester, very comparable to going to Sacramento State, for example, but again, at that UC level of research. And we're very coming up close. So just keep in mind, you have to live on campus if you are a WUI student. So keep that in your thoughts. And otherwise, please reach out if you do have questions. Thank you. Taylor, thank you so much to you and the University of Nevada, Reno. Um, next up, I have the pleasure of introducing to you um, San Francisco State University. Take it away whenever you're ready. Thank you, Kearney. Hello, everyone, and good evening. Thank you for being here with us uh, today. My name is Myra Escobar, and I am the Associate Director for Undergraduate Recruitment with San Francisco State University. I am so grateful to be here and uh, introduce you to San Francisco State. Uh, just like some of my colleagues today, I am located in the Sacramento area. So I will be your point of contact for admission um, information about the campus. Where are we located? We are actually located in the heart of San Francisco. Um, we are about a mile and a half uh, away from the Pacific Ocean, but we are also very close to both of the main bridge, bridges going into the city, which are Golden Gate and Bay Bridge. Uh, we are ranked number 11 top public university uh, in the region. Uh, we are also a rank number 11 for top performance on social mobility, which is something that we do take pride of. We are ranked number 13 best college uh, for veterans. And we are also number 29 regional universities in the West. So as you can see, there are quite a few uh, rankings that we are proud of, and these are just some of them and not all of them. Uh, we are divided into six separate colleges. We have, uh, these colleges are the ones that housed all of our majors. We do offer over 70 majors or programs at San Francisco State. One of the cool things about the campus is that although we offer uh, over 70 majors, a lot of those majors have various options or concentrations that you can decide to elaborate on or really, really put that concentration on. So with all of those concentrations, you are going to have over 100 opportunities to show your uniqueness uh, within the university. Here are some of our most popular majors. Uh, that you can find, uh, obviously, our business administration, our biology, uh, psychology. We are very uh, big on the arts as well and, and uh, 
um, uh, media. So we have our broadcast and electric communications art, and we just completed building the new Becca building. So for those students who are going to be coming to the university fall 2021, they will be one of the first classes that will be housed under that new building, which is very, very exciting. We have a rigorous uh, athletics program. We are ranked NCAA Division II for both uh, men and women athletics. Our track and field um, for men is actually NCAA Division I. We do have a private, uh, private college life with over 200 um, clubs and organizations to choose from. Some of them will be specifically to the interest or your major or your professional um, ambitions. Other ones will be a little bit more in social nature or maybe academically oriented if that's what you are looking for. But you will have a lot of opportunities on campus to get involved and really be part of the community. If you want to participate in sports, but you really don't want to uh, be deal with the um, the um, challenge of the the uh, you know athletics uh, rigor you can join any of our intramural or sports clubs as well which are a little bit more fun and a little bit less um, demanding. Uh, we offer a variety of campus and student resources. Uh, like, these are just some of them to, uh, that I wanted to highlight. We do have our, our tutoring and academic support center, and that serves all of the students. But on top of that, you will also have academic support within your department, within your dean's office, within your specific clubs. So there is a lot of academic support. Uh, I also want to point out our educational opportunity and pathways programs that offer additional academic support, but in some cases it offers additional support, whether it is moral support, health support, economic support, you can look up to them for that um, additional support as well. And these are just some of them. Uh, I encourage you to log into our website and really look at uh, what we have to offer. First time freshmen, uh, we uh, admit freshmen, of course, uh, we are looking for the A through G prep courses, so your A through G subject areas, your high school diploma, and a GPA of uh, 2.5 or higher. If your GPA is below the 2.5, we are going to be looking at supplemental information provided on that application to make our decision. Uh, and as of right now, we will not be requiring SATs or ACT for admission purposes. At the transfer level, there are two ways to be admitted. One is a lower division transfer. The other one is an upper division transfer. Here are the requirements as a lower division transfer. We will be looking at community college work and high school eligibility as a lower division transfer. As an upper division, we are looking just at community college work. Um, Here's just a very quick uh, course breakdown of what it is like to be uh, financing your education. And we do offer financial aid in the forms of grant scholarships, work study, but in addition, we do have over 700 uh, institutional and private scholarships that you can apply to. Housing is granted on a case by case basis. I encourage you to submit your application, even if you're not sure that you want to be on campus. Um, and lastly, because we're running out of time. I wanna leave you with my contact information. Uh, I think that that's the most important and I will cover everything else once you get in contact with me. So thank you. Ira, thank you so much to you and San Francisco State University. Our final presentation tonight will be from Humboldt State University. Take it away, Leo, whenever you're ready. Thank you, everybody. So my name is Leo. I'm one of the admissions counselors at Humboldt State University. And I am, Humboldt State University is located about five, out, five hours north of San Francisco, about an hour and a half south of the Oregon border, and about six hours from Elk Grove. We are not an impacted institution, so all of our majors are open, and um, maybe the nursing might have a couple of, um, and it's a bachelor, it's a Bachelor's of Science and Nursing Completion Program. So you have to have your um, RN first. So you have to go to community college. But other than that, all of our all of our majors are totally open. 
Um, we're right at, we're located right on the coast. So if you see the photo, um, we're about probably half a mile away from the beach. We are located in the rainforest of Humboldt County. So all the redwood trees, the big trees that you can drive the, your car through, um, that's where we're located. And all the greenery you see here on this photo is there's no sprinkler systems or anything like that. It's just all natural. It's kind of where we, where we are, where we're located. This building right here, that's called, uh, um, that's Founders Hall. Our institution was um, founded in 1913. We're the furthest north campus on the California State University. The big news is for the students who are gonna be applying for 2023 is that we're hoping to be the next Cal Poly University in the state of California. So that's, that's something that we're, we're looking forward to. Um, here's a little map for you guys to see. We're about three hours from Reading, like I said, about six hours from Elk Grove. Um, and we're part of the 23 campus CSU system. So all the A through G requirements, the 2.5 grade point average, the we're not gonna be re requesting the SAT or ACT are all the same as the other in the other California State University system. We, you would use the same application. Our application opens up on October 1st. And for us, we're staying open all the way up until February 28th. And so just, just to note, also don't forget that FAFSA also opens up on October 1st. So two really important things for you seniors who are on the call. Um, that building that I mentioned at the very beginning is um, facing the ocean. And so because of where we live, we've got the lagoons, the beaches, the ocean, the mountains, the, the rivers, the marshes, and the big and all the red 1.5 million acre redwood forest right attached to our institution that we have this philosophy of ditch the desk and get out and do it. Get hands on learning from, there's so much education outside the walls of, the, of our institution that we take full advantage of that. So if you see the photos up in top, those students are all in class. And so our front yard is, like I said, the beaches, the ocean, the lagoons. The students here are in oceanography, marine biology, and envir environmental resources engineering. And then our backyard, like I said, we have a 1.5 million acre forest that's a classroom and it's right attached to our, our the back of our um, softball field and our kinesiology and athletics building. So students study forestry, wildlife, um, zoology, and getting hands-on experience with the, with the National Park Service, with Redwood National Park State Parks, and the tribal communities. We have 13 different tribal communities in our areas, and a lot of our students, like specifically in our forestry department, we have a concentration in tribal forest management and students learn across the board and especially in our natural resources and sciences all about traditional ecological knowledge. How did native people live in this area for thousands of years before non native people um, came around and how did they, how did they sustain the forest without these big forest fires, how did they sustain their fisheries and all that and so we do have our president does have a Native American Advisory Council where we work really closely with a lot of departments on our campus. Um, we're a pretty small town, 17,000 students. Our total population at Humboldt State is around 7,000 students. Our average class size is about 30 students. So it's kind of like a, kind of like a high school. You're never going to be at, uh, in a class at Humboldt State University where there's 300 students in your classroom, where the professor is way up on front with the screen of his face on either side of him at, at a podium. And then at the end of the class, he walks out the back door. At Humboldt, they're going to know you by name. They're going to know what your aspirations are. They'll be able to write you letters of recommendation, maybe do some internships. And also we, um, our students also can start doing research with their professors as undergraduates. You don't have to have your bachelor's degree to start doing work with your professors. Our temperature, like I said earlier, we live in a rainforest. So in the summertime, if it's 70 degrees on, on, in the summer on campus, I'm taking the day off because it's too hot. Our average high is 64 degrees. Today, our high was 62. Um, and then in the winter, we haven't had snow in probably about eight years stick on the ground. Our average, our average low in the wintertime is 41 degrees. And it's just because of where we're located, the instability of the air along the coastline. We do get a lot of rain. 56% of our students are undergraduate students. Our first time fresh or uh, under first generation students. So they're the first in their family who go to who went to college. And then um, our students do take take serious uh, commitment to um, environmental justice and social justice. And so they take this pledge once they graduate to really think about um, their future in um, in making sure that we live the world and leave the world in a better place. We do have 50 majors 
again, our philosophy of ditch the desk and get out and do it. This is a couple, these are just a couple of photos. I know I'm running out of time of some of the classes that we have. Um, we do have teachers. If you're thinking about becoming a teacher, you can get your credential and your undergrad in four years at Humboldt State University. We don't have, you don't have to take the fifth year credential. And then just another couple of photos of hands-on learning experiences here at Humboldt State University. I just wanted to quickly, we do have a fire science lab. Um, we do have an ocean going vessel where students can go five miles out into the ocean and do some research. And then I just wanted to do just a couple of these last couple slides of campus and some of our housing student. We have 2000 spots available for housing on campus. Um, students do not have to live on campus as first time freshmen and you can bring your car, free bus rides all around town, Humboldt County and all that stuff. So I wanted to stop there. Thank you guys very much for your time. Please look me up on the Humboldt State University website and we can schedule a one on one Zoom meeting. All right, thank you. Leo, thank you so much to you and Humboldt State University. Now I'd like to invite our panelists to turn your back on your cameras if you're able to. And we're going to go round robin and answer um, a couple of questions, depending on how much time we have. The first question is, what um what do you want students to remember about your institution and we'll start with um uh csu stanislaus first well one thing is that we are not an impacted campus um we pretty much any major other than nursing uh, students can apply and they can be assured that if they meet the uh, admission requirements they will be admitted I take it it's my turn to answer that question. Um, I would just say that Michigan State has a lot of opportunity for immersing your passions academically. So if you have multiple areas that you want to study, we do not require students to, to essentially choose a major until the end of their second year. So you definitely have time to explore and that's what college is all about. And really just immerse yourself in the Big Ten culture. if you're into athletics, if you're into um, just being part of a big community, I think that would be a great uh, place for you to consider Michigan State. Um, UNLV is a, just a great growing institution. We are a great growing city, so we have a lot of opportunities and it's a good institution to be at. Uh, Nevada, I think of as really a community beyond the university. You do truly feel like the Reno area, everyone who lives in Reno is involved, loves coming to campus for programming and for events. So if you want that type of atmosphere where you are not only valued in the classroom, but in the city that you live, Nevada definitely does offer that for you. And San Francisco State has a great commitment to social justice and upper mobility. Being so close to the Silicon Valley, we do offer a lot of hands-on uh, experience for students to go out there and test drive their careers. Uh, so although we are, you know, not only in the big city, but it is also a very uh, a small town kind of feel just within the borders of the university. Uh, it really does not uh, feel like you are in the middle of one of the larger cities in the world. I'm next. All right, cool. So yeah, I think Humboldt State University is, uh, people comment on it, the fact that it seems kind of like a private school, like a small private school. Like I said, we only have 7,000 students. Um, you can call me if you want to, like tomorrow, if you want to send me a transcript, my email is on the website, my cell phone's on the website, we can schedule a one-on-one -on -one Zoom meeting. Um, if you call the department, you're going to get, you're going to talk to somebody, you're not going to call our office and push seven, push three, push two, only to get hung up on. You're going to be able to call and leave a message. If I don't call you back, my cell phone's there and I'll, and we can have a conversation with you and your parents and whatever you need to do, we, we, we got your back. And in the last two minutes that we have, so this is going to have to be a lightning round, we'll go in the same order and give your best piece of advice for students and families going through this process. So we'll go in the same order. I would say uh, visit the campus that you plan to go on uh, and, and attend for four years. It's going to be four years, a long vacation, but do visit the campus. I would say have fun with the process. It could be stressful at times, but enjoy it um, and do not be afraid to ask questions. This is your experience, so make sure you focus on yourself and what's best for you and not the peers around you. Please leave a voicemail if you call. Otherwise, we won't know who called. So we'd love that. For 
me it will be don't get to hang up on the title of your degree look at the preparation that comes to that uh, with that degree uh, re, uh research the colleges uh make sure that the, the the campus that you choose you're choosing it for you and not for someone else as my colleagues have said it's your experience is your trajectory is your search for higher education so please choose the right campus for you don't get hung up on that title and have fun I got to follow up with Isaac, ask questions. Don't be afraid to ask questions. We're all on this call because we want to see you guys be successful. I wake I first for me, I, maybe I can speak on behalf of the entire group, but we wake up every day and we, we get to, and we say we get to go to work today. And that's one of the coolest things is being able to go to work and help students. So, so don't be afraid. We want you to ask questions. Parents, we want you to ask questions. If you have counselors and you're not sure, go ahead and feel free to pick up the phone and, and call us and, and I think that's the best advice is ask because those people who know, they know because they asked. I hope you listen to all these lovely professionals as they gave you their expert advice. It's all wonderful advice. Um, thank you so much for joining us this evening. As you close out, there'll be a quick five question survey. So please provide us with some feedback. Sign up for more sessions. There's a whole um, two more hours left. And this was being recorded as well as all of the other programs this evening and will be available for playback at stripescan.com slash elk dot or elk dash grove. Thanks so much, everyone. And good luck with your um, college search process. Bye-bye.